Right, hello and welcome back to another little Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be making a uh, object space gradient. Um, so if we have a look at these demo objects, you see they've all got this same material applied uh, and they have a gradient from black to white um, and it's in local space. So if I rotate my object, um, that adapts and works with that. If I scale it, we're always getting black at the bottom and white at the top um, and it works for everything. So it works for these static meshes and for these primitives. Um, quite a useful little thing to do. It's not textures, it's not vertex painting, it's all done with maths inside the shader. Um, so let's open it up and have a look and see how it's done. So I'm just going to delete it all, start from scratch and build it up. It's not many nodes as you just saw but um, some of them are a little bit um, have the more complex nodes we use in Unreal. So let's break them down one by one. So first off we're going to use the world position. If I just plug that in and apply it and have a look what we get. Um, everything goes very glowy. What's world position doing? Well, it's outputting the position in the world of the pixel being rendered, um, and what we're seeing here is color. So, if I just take this, make a copy, if I bring it down below the world, here are all negative numbers. Remember, Unreal can't display negative numbers as color, so it goes completely black. If I bring it across, you can see this is where the origin is. This is a uh, the zero point in green in the y-axis so these pixels have positive values these ones have negative values and the same in the other axes as well so if I bring this forwards this way and then across there you are it's getting into the, the red positive values as well so it's just the the world space pixel being rendered outputted as a color now what we're going to do with that is we're going to transform it uh, do transform position and we're going to transform from world space to local space. Plug this one in and click apply and have a look at this. So you can see now each of the objects has its own sort of uh, color set. It's, it's the same thing, the, the black, blue, um, white and kind of orangey yellow color coordinates for its, its own coordinate system. Um, but they're all local to the object. Now these three are just the, the primitives from here. Uh, the pivots in the center, so we're getting this black corner and this object pivot to the bottom so we're only getting those positive values and if I just multiply this by or divide this by a scalar just to quickly demo and bring the colors down a little bit let's apply that, divide them by zero is no good you can see we can sort of scale those colors um, but the important thing is these are the same for each object so uh, now we've got our, our kind of our gradients they're there, there's the three gradients. What we want to do is scale them. Um, I'm going to scale them by the object size. That way, if the object gets bigger, it gets taken into account of, of the size of the thing. Um, and it's sort of relative now to the to the object we're using. So to do that, we're going to use another a node here. It's called object uh, local bounds. This is a material function provided by Epic. If we just jump in and have a look, what's it doing? Well, it's a little bit of custom HLSL. Uh, primitive local object bounds min xyz so if you imagine a box surrounding our object or in this case this is a box there's two points we need to define the bounds one is the bottom bottom left of the lowest points in all axis and one is the top points in all axis and that gives us our object bounds um, yeah bounds minimum bounds maximum and it's just doing that the two outputted and then the size well that's one minus the other isn't it if I take the largest point and I subtract the smallest point I get that distance so in actual fact, that's what we'll use. Uh, no, nope, not making any same as that. So we just define, divide our world position gradient in local space by our object bound size. Now before, remember, we were getting very big glowy values here. These are all in the in the hundreds and thousands. Um, if I divide that by the object size, we get much more usable values. Um, and for this guy, actually that's sort of done, isn't it? So if we mask this out, uh, and just mask out the red, the, the blue channel, because I just want a vertical gradient in up, um, actually this one's already done. So we've taken that object pivot that's already at the bottom, and we've given it a, uh, a gradient now from black at the bottom, white at the top, simply by converting the world position into local space, and then divided by the size. Well that's fine, but these ones not so much, not getting the black gradient to be at the bottom. Well, we can add an offset. So if I did this and add an offset of 0.5, just do that. 
Now these ones work, the gradient is the bottom, but this one's broken. So the fact that the pivot isn't in the right place in these or in the same places between our different objects uh, means we'd have to go in and manually adjust our, our offset value. Well, that's not very good. Maybe there's a way we can fix that. Well, there is. Um, we can take the object position in world space, and what this does is it gives us the uh, world space center position of the object's bounds. So if I just uh, let's preview that. On its own. So, very similar to the world position. This is per pixel and then this is per object. So, it's taking the center point. Again, we're getting black values, but now as it goes across, rather than being that gradient we were seeing before in world space, it's either completely off or completely on. So, um, that gives us information about where our pivot is, or rather where our centroid is and how the two relate. So, if I do uh, transform again transform this into a local space so I can do some maths with the two of them and I just subtract one from the other so what we're saying here is, well let's have a preview of this first I click apply you can see this. these objects all have black or zeros uh, the bound center and the pivot point are the same here there's a difference between the bound center which is somewhere around his belly button um, and the pivot so we're getting a value for this so it's just giving us the offset from our pivot to our, our bound center and if we subtract one from the other and look at our uh, missive again now we can see all of them are sharing the same kind of grid coordinate system uh, and now our previous math works doesn't it so we take our, our are now kind of like um, our gradient now that we've dealt with the pivot we can plug in our divide to deal with the scale offset by 0.5 because we want things to be at the bottom and we know now this bottom is always going to be half from this because we're using the center uh, and then finally mask it and hopefully if we click apply we can see that that's taken into account all of these things if we're going to unlit values of white at the top black at the bottom um, it doesn't matter how the object is UV'd or scaled or any of these things, it's all completely object space, mathematically derived. Very useful um, little thing. There is one caveat I will, I will add. Um, this doesn't work for instances, so it would be really useful if we were using a foliage painter. You could paint some kind of like foliage height mask. <coughs> you could have the top bits being windy and moving around and the bottom bits not. Unfortunately, if we go into our foliage painter, I'm just going to create a quick foliage type, that will do, and assign a mesh, let's use the man, uh, I want to override my material with this object space gradient, I select this, uh, if I paint these, well these work, that's fine, no problem, if I go in and painted some, some more on top, a bit higher up, uh, uh, oh, now what's happened? Well, all of this foliage, this man painted as foliage, is one object. So the object bounds is in the center, not the instance. So uh, while they were all on one height, they worked, but now we're getting black right at the bottom and white right at the top. So this doesn't work for an instance, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but it does work for objects. Um, might be useful to you. Um, oh, this guy's off at some angle. There we are. Um, yeah, let's give it these in the way. Uh, and yeah, that's how you create an object space gradient using, um, using some maths. hope that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me um, in links in the description. Uh, and I'll hope you back next week with another little tutorial. So, yeah. Right, me again. Uh, just before we go with this lesson, I want to do a little um, example of how we might want to use this. <coughs> Obviously, we could create a gradient and use it for kind of like I say, the wind shader, have this bit move, all this kind of stuff. But if I just take this and instead of masking out just the height, I mask out the height and the um, and the green channel as well. We get this sort of two-color gradient. Well, actually, what does this remind us of? Not an if node. UVs. Um, we could actually use these object-based gradients to derive the texture as if they were UVs. So if I just load in this uh, UV map. Here it is. Plug this in as the color and click apply. Now we should see we've got that texture being applied to that object in object space. Um, it's working like a projection 
Uh, really nice. Didn't have to worry about you being my object. Um, can apply the same thing to lots of objects of different sizes and scales. Um, couple of things. Well, it's backwards, isn't it? So, if I multiply by a two vector, if I multiply by one one, it's not doing anything. Oh, let's go in here. Right, let's apply that. Nothing should happen. Nothing should change because it's obviously one's the same. But if we invert one of our channels. There we are, that's now applied the right way up. Um, we could have just rotated our object, that would have worked as well. Maybe had to flip something, but um, yeah, very nice. Notice uh, the, well, let's have a look at this guy first. Uh, what's going on here? Well, the projection's actually in this axis, the way it's been exported. And you can see that projection's happening. So depending on the object that you're using, you might need to use a red-blue rather than a there we are, rather than a green blue. Um, if you're doing top down, you'd want to use red green. But um, here we are. You can see this now is projected on the other side of our object. And this one's been flipped. Obviously, it projects through, so one side's going to be the mirror of the other. Um, these black sides we're getting because our texture has a black rim around it. If I change this to, say, some clouds noise or something like that, if I just use the red channel, we're getting. Um, smearing because it is a projection um, depending on what you're doing maybe this is a very thin object and it doesn't really matter we're doing some kind of I don't know flat box um, but if that does matter we can create a mask using uh, an angle check how do we do that well it's a thing here we want to compare it to the object's local uh, green axis in this case because we're doing this one is that green or is that red I can't really tell with the thing there well, let's try it and see what happens. Let's compare it to the red. Um, we want a transform again, but this time we're not going to transform the position, we're going to transform the vector. Because we want to work from local space. So we transform this from local space to world space, and so now we've got a, a direction pointing forwards, and then what we're going to do is a dot product. One of my favourites. Uh, dot products with the vertex normal. What's this going to give us? Well, let's have a look. Click apply. Oh, it's on the wrong side. It's the green channel. Uh, there we are. Oh, so, what's it doing? Well, it's comparing the vertex normals, which is the way the vertex faces are, are pointing, to the local positive green axis. So this face is facing positive green. Well, this face we also want to be masked. This is where all the texture is not stretching and not smearing. And so, if we have a look in our here, if we just take the absolute, actually this value is negative one. Uh, don't, if you don't know the dot product, well, I'll explain that one in a second. But um, what does the dot product do? It compares two direct or two two vectors, two direction vectors. Um, if they're pointing in the exact same way, you get a value of one. So here we were comparing the local green axis to these vertex normals. So this face, its normals face along that direction. So we get one, these ones we get zero, and then this one, if they're facing the exact opposite, you get minus one. So anything that's perpendicular or 90 degrees, you get black. Anything that's facing the same way, you get white. And anything that's facing the opposite way, you get minus one. Um, and you can see that on this sphere. And then this, this abs basically just, just ignores the, the negative values. So we're getting uh, white here, black's in the middle, minus one, and then all this side's inverted. So if I stick that one back in. There we are, you can see these negative numbers here. It's a really nice way to compare two angles. Um, in this case, we're comparing it to a local angle, uh, or local direction. Um, and so if we just multiply these two together, uh, uh, like so, we should get our projection. And then this area here that's, that's masked out from our smearing the bit that wasn't working. Um, if we wanted, we could repeat this again and do the same logic for the other direction and again for the third direction and then we'd have a triplanar box projection mapper um, which might be useful. Um, you are going to get some smearing. It might be that you want to come in here and control this mask just with some contrast. Any kind of triplanar projection stuff, you're always going to get a little bit of this kind of 
uh, smearing and, and blending errors where things go through but um, quite a nice useful little technique um, very cool so yeah gradients if we just want a simple height gradient you can use that plug that directly into emissive that just gives it there and again this is all object space which is really nice um, but we can use those gradients in a really smart way maybe as UVs so uh, that really is it for this time um, hope that was helpful hope you learnt something uh, and yeah join me next time and I'll be doing some more Unreal material tutorials probably so thank you